I love you, baby. Oh, yeah, that was great. Hey, everybody, how are you? How you feeling tonight? So, uh, did, did he give you the howdy, how you doing? I'm going to give you the South Philly, yo, how you doing? So, where's my Philly crowd? They're right down there. Missy, we got our Eagles uniform and everything all set. Um, I don't know, man. This is pretty cool to be down here in Orlando. You know what Orlando is? It's the land of the dreams. And that's what Invincible is all about. How many people saw Invincible? Ah, oh, sweet. Did you like it? All right, I liked it too. My favorite sports mover ever. So, um, you know, I don't know. Any, who was here in the, in, the, in the general session this morning? And I was hanging out. I had a pretty good time at the general session. And, uh, you know, I've been in big corporations. I was with Sally May and have done some other stuff like that. And I've sat in meetings like this. And, and today, I heard some really cool words by a lot of great people. So rather than mention everybody here for fear I'm going to miss somebody, I just wanted to go through some of the, buzz, the buzzwords I heard. And that was opportunity. And that was also uh, buying in and balance and having focus, because I know Brady talked about that. And going from good to great and getting pissed off for 2017. How great is that? I love this one. And that's um, embrace the suck. Yeah. Remember embrace the suck. And, and yeah, that's a, that was a good one. And, and the one that got me the most was the, uh, was the word of inspiration uh, from a brother of mine, because I'm a cancer survivor, uh, colon cancer, and that's Kevin Braun. So how about everybody right now, how about a thought for Kevin, because I know he's all here with us here today. So, you know, there's going to be a little football metaphor theme that's going on right now, and I say huddle up to make a difference today with tomorrow in mind. And I also have this other little saying that I'd like to put in there, and if it comes up, come on, here it goes. And it says, we're going to set our hair on fire and cause a wreck. So that's what it's all about, a big special teams thing that we used to do. And, you know, when you think about it, you make a difference. What could be greater than that? You make a difference. You make an impact. You know, it's all about motion, and people have dreams, and that's what it's all about. That's what Disney's about, right? It's all about the dream, and the dream that you help people have is you have them have that dream of, of having a good quality of life, of being pain-free, of having that motion again, and, and that's what it's all about, and you do make a difference, and that's why you're here today, and when you think about it, and it's a great saying that I have right here. It's a possibility of having a dream come true that makes life interesting. And let me tell you, ever since the movie Invincible came out, my life has been very, very interesting. Uh, again, how many people saw it so I can see? Oh, nice. And how many did it? Are you Rudy fans? I mean, really? Give me a break. You know, you know I mean, you know, one tackle for crying out loud. Rudy, 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 Rudy. I love Rudy. Come on, I, I have fun with him all the time. I, I love the Rude. But there it is. We're, we're celebrating the 10th anniversary. And you're all about numbers, right? I mean, that's what, it's all, that's what drives you. Other things drive you, but numbers drive you. Invincible has almost driven a, a billion dollars. A billion dollars at a company around the corner. A billion. And every time I see the movie, did anybody cry when they saw the movie? Oh, I cry every time I see it, and I've seen it 150 times, every time. And, and I'll tell you why I cry. I cry a billion dollars, I get no residuals whatsoever. None. Yeah, should have had you as your contract guy. You know, we're talking about impact, and we're talking about the dream. And I thought I'd show you a couple of things of impact before I show you one of my favorite videos. And I don't know if anybody has a football card here made about them, but that football card I have there, this kid comes up to me, he says, yo, Vinny, this kid from South Philly, he says, yo, Vinny. He says, yo, man, he says, you're only worth 19 cents in your rookie card. I said, well, you know what? And he said, ever since the movie came out on eBay, it's worth 25 bucks. So that's, that, that's impact right there, baby. So get that movie made about you. And how many people remember when Appalachian State, remember when Appalachian State beat Michigan? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Well, you know, and, and a couple of teams have shown our movie, and that's what Invincible is. It's our story. It's not my story. It's our story because we've all done something that we've had that wild dream and we've had it come true. And they've, they're showing the movie to teams sometimes as motivators. So, you know, Appalachian State watched Invincible. They didn't watch Rocky. You know, they didn't watch Rudy. You know, so. But you know what? You know what? You know what Michigan watched? Titanic, for crying out loud. So, yeah. 
If you're going to have an inspiration, Ron, if you're going to have a meeting for your team, no Titanic. I got a video that's coming up. I think you're going to like it. It's called Living Your Dream. It's done by Walt Disney, and let's take a shot at it. Vince Papali will probably be remembered as the free agent walk-on who defied football logic. But above all, his legacy will live on with the men he played with and the city he inspired. Vince will always have a special place in this town because he did something that the other guys couldn't do. I mean, he took the passion of the Philadelphia fan, put it in a jersey, and threw it into the wedge on Sunday. I think he's going to be remembered as the physical manifestation of every fan's desire going back generations. But it wasn't the kind of history that you're going to be able to look up in a record book. It's the kind of history that you're going to find in the heart of a city and in the people that go to the games. And in a sense, that's the greater history because that's the one that lives on. People are going to remember him and his number and his desire and how they felt watching him play longer than they're going to remember guys that caught more passes and scored more touchdowns. Because to them, what Vince did said more about who they were as fans and as a city than anything else. And that's what his legacy is going to be. But I don't think this is the end of Vince. I think it's the beginning. I think this movie is going to tell a story that everybody can get a little piece of and really bring it right into their own heart and say, you know what, I've been dealing with that. I was ready to give up. I think I can do something. In 1976, I dreamt of becoming a Philadelphia Eagle. And now, 30 years later, people are calling me invincible. Don't stop living your dream. So I hope we're all dreamers, and uh, by the way, uh, thank you. Okay, I'll take that applause for that. Thank you very much. Like I had anything to do with it. <laughs> so you ask, and you wonder, how long did you spend in the hospital after running up those steps? Only a week. Wasn't too bad. Hey, uh, any athletes out here? Yeah, all right. You know, I, I, it, 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 here's a couple of dreamers right here. Uh, great athletes. They're my parents. You see that lady right there? That's my mother, Elmira Elizabeth Sage. The dream that they had? Their dream that my parents had is they were immigrants, you know, first-generation immigrants. And there's my mom, never got beyond the eighth grade. How cool was that? She played professional baseball. It wasn't that fluffy, league of their own stuff, you know, softball. It was the real deal. It was major league football. I mean, major league uh, baseball. And my dad, my dad grew up in a pig farm, for crying out loud, right over in Falcroft. Right over Missy Window, Falcroft, right out in suburban Philadelphia. So anybody knows that neighborhood. And he never got beyond the eighth grade. And that's his, legal, that, that, that's his field of dreams. That's the background I had. And, and I grew up in a housing project. For crying out loud, the house that I grew up in was no bigger than this stage up here. That's what it was. And I'm pointing to the house I have. And the yellow, the yellow arrow is my field of dreams. Now, how many people here were coached by a parent, by their dad or the mom? Have you ever thanked them for doing that? Were they a pain in the ass, though? maybe sometimes at home. Yeah, my dad was pretty cool, but he was tough. And there he is in that snazzy hat right in the middle. That's my dad. And can you see me there? Try to find me. Guy in the top left, all the way next to the guy in the white coat. And that was it. I wanted to be a Philadelphia Eagle, baby. That was the dream of my lifetime. And my idol was Tommy McDonald. And Tommy McDonald was this little guy from Oklahoma. And he just went out and he did it all. And he, he was one of the top wide receivers for the Philadelphia Eagles and wound up in the Hall of Fame. And, and it's all about opportunity. And that's what you were talking about today. And an opportunity is worth to you exactly what you put into it. And I got an opportunity to play for the Philadelphia Eagles and have all this happen, to have the rookie card, to have this, this, this Appalachian State thing, this Michigan thing, and it all happened because somebody gave me an opportunity.